Jimmy here with One Road, and today I'm going to go over everything that I have bought so far to build out my beginner's overlanding kit. <laughs> This is certainly not everything you need to go overlanding, but this is the beginning stages of my kit build out. And I thought I'd go over a couple of things and why I bought them. There's a lot of things on this tailgate here, each of which serve a very unique purpose, of course. And we'll get to each and every one of these things. But the first thing I want to talk about is my sleeping arrangements. Of course, if you follow my channel, you'll know that my overlanding rig is a 95 GMC Suburban, and there is plenty of room in there for me to sleep. And that's my plan starting out. With that second row of seats folded down, I have so much room there, more than enough. I'm six foot three, and there is way more than enough room for me to sleep very comfortably in the back of this truck. So if that's the case and I can sleep inside there, I don't need a tent, but what I will need is a great sleeping bag. I found this company called Wiggies and they're out of Colorado. Everything is made in the USA. And yes, this is a gigantic sleeping bag. I did that on purpose, however, because I wanted to have the warmest sleeping bag I could possibly have so that I could actually use it like a blanket inside my truck. This particular bag is called the Hunter Antarctic. It's a rectangular bag and it's good down to minus 60 degrees. Yes, you heard that right, minus 60 degrees. You can see it comes with this pack down bag. We can open this up. Okay, I have the bag completely rolled out in the back here and you can see this thing is huge. It's super thick, of course, being a minus 60 degree bag, but that's exactly what I wanted. These zippers are super high quality. And taking a look inside the zipper, you'll see another great feature, which is this right here. This basically blocks off the draft that would come in through the zipper, but they've included an extra large, extra thick pad here to block any draft from coming in. There is also a drawstring on this side which cinches up the hoodie part for those really cold nights. Now you can see this sleeping bag is incredibly wide and while some might think that it's overkill and it definitely is, my goal is to be able to overland in any conditions I want and to never be too cold. Here's the back side and you can see this is made with incredibly high quality materials. The stitching is even incredible quality. So that's the Wiggies sleeping bag guys. If you're looking for an incredibly high quality sleeping bag that won't break the bank, you're gonna wanna look at Wiggies. Well, here we have a classic camping stove. If you've been in the search for a camping stove pretty much ever, you've definitely come across this one as it's probably the most sold unit ever. It's been in production forever. It's of course the Coleman Classic. I absolutely love this classic look, this classic Coleman green. You can see here, it just runs off of a small one pound bottle of propane. It comes with this arm here that attaches the propane tank and two little knobs here that basically tighten up to close and loosen up to open the valves inside. Let's take a look at those valves now. All right, if I go ahead and open this thing up, what you might notice here is these little wings here or wind blockers aren't flapping around like they normally would on a stock unit. You can see they're tucked nice and tidy up out of the way and I'll show you why. Pulling this first one off you can see I actually glued a really strong neodymium magnet there. I, I pushed this first one in and that second one is very tightly held by that magnet which holds the first arm in and those things don't flop around everywhere when I open this thing up and close it. So it just makes life a lot more easy opening and closing this thing, as you can see. Okay, with this thing fully opened up and these wind guards attached in their little slots there, you can see this is a really basic camp stove. It's got two burners, of course, an aluminized tray in there, this chromed out grill that the pots and pans sit on, two knobs, like I was saying, that turn on the burners, and that's it. One thing you might notice here is there's no electronic ignition. There's no way to literally light the fire. So you're gonna need something like a lighter, maybe a long nose lighter would be better. I have my Zippo here. Okay, so in order to light these burners, it's quite simple. You literally just turn it on 
you can hear the gas coming out. So hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure if that's coming off on camera, but that burner is lit and those things get nice and hot. You can see I got that sucker cranked right now. You can hear it, of course. Now, just a quick note, you can see how clean this thing is, and that is because I have not had a chance to actually use it yet. Reading a lot of reviews, doing a lot of research, there are many units you can buy that are $100, $150. This guy is only about 42 bucks, and I think that's an extremely good deal based off of everything I was seeing. It's a great way to get your first camp stove while not breaking the bank. And you know, this thing is a no frills item. It's it's got no electronic ignition. It's got no stainless steel inserts. It's maybe made with a little bit thinner materials, but overall, this is a classic. It's been being made for many, many years now, and lots of people use these and like them. So this will, I'm assuming, this will treat me well for many, many years. If I want to upgrade, no big deal. This thing only cost me about 40 something dollars here. So not a big deal if I wanna step it up to a nicer unit, but I feel good that I got something like this that I can pretty much thrash and learn how to use out in a campsite and not worry about you know spilling something on it or, or what have you. Now we've all seen Max Tracks, which are awesome, right? These big, gigantic, long traction boards that basically will last you a lifetime if you treat them right. But there is a small downside to those, and that is the cost. No one wants to spend $300 plus on a set of traction boards. For me, I went out on the hunt for a USA-made traction board, and while there are a few that I found, they still are pretty dang expensive until I found these. Quick disclaimer, I am a beginner. I have not had a chance to use these, but from what I've seen, these will be every bit as good, if not better, than your typical long, rigid traction boards. So this kit you see here is about 135 bucks. It comes with two traction boards and this carrying bag. This bag is very nice, and I believe it's also made in the USA. So let's open it up and see what comes inside. So you can see it just kind of clamshells open there. This not only is a traction board, but it's completely foldable and can be used as a leveling pad. Being used as a leveling pad, you can unfold it and use it at different heights. Of course, you have different options for that. Right now, these come in not only this orange, but also black. I opted for the orange just because when this gets covered in dirt and mud, it's gonna be easier to see, and that way I won't lose them. Taking a look at just how these things work, you can see this isn't your typical traction board design. This isn't a long, rigid board that you have to strap somewhere on your roof or the outside of your vehicle because it takes up so much room. They designed these things to be able to pack up small in this case, and what's so awesome about that is they are are solid, they're dense, they will last you a lifetime. And speaking about lifetimes, this has a lifetime warranty. If these ever break, I guess you could just call the company, maybe send them in, show them a picture, I don't know how it works, but these are lifetime guaranteed. But opening these things up, you can see you just simply open that baby up and it's got these super hard ridges which are supposed to auto center this on your tire. So as your tire's gripping this, these boards wanna center themselves on your tire, which is pretty awesome. And these ridges are on both sides to grip the ground and your tire, and it just lets you crawl right out of whatever situation you're in. From what I read, these were tested and pretty much made for extremely heavy duty applications like semi trucks and military vehicles and things like that. So our measly 5,000, 7,000 pound vehicles are gonna be no match for these. These, I suspect, will last a very long time. I have to say, traction boards like this that are very unique, very industrial built, I would say, coming from the USA and only costing 135 bucks for a two pack along with this carrying case. I mean, this is an unbeatable design and an unbeatable price at that. I don't know why I didn't buy two sets. And matter of fact, I'm probably gonna go order another set just because they're so cheap. So like I said, this is my beginner's overlanding kit and I have not used these yet. I hope that I will never have to use these, but 
I'm fairly confident, based off of what I've seen, that these are going to work no problem the next time or if I ever get stuck. All right, from my research and just plain common sense, I've come up with a few tools I felt like I was gonna need. Okay, number one and probably the coolest here is this hatchet by Estwing. This thing is made in the USA. It is built like a tank. It looks great too. This is not very expensive. I think it was about $40, so definitely worth its weight in gold. Comes with a nice sheath. You can see the blade there. It's got a hammer end, and this will come in handy for things like firewood or chopping you know, branches out of the way of maybe the path I'm driving on. Who knows? Maybe even protection, who knows? From what I've seen, a hatchet is a must, and this S-Wing brand is awesome being made in the USA, so this is what I decided to pick up. There are many different options out there, of course, but for 40 bucks, I think you can't go wrong with something like this. The next thing is a small shovel. Now, this is about as small of a shovel as I could find, and it was very cheap. I think this was about 10 bucks or so. Not made in the USA, unfortunately, but I think it'll get the job done, and for the price I paid, I should have probably picked up another one just in case. But this should get the job done to help me get unstuck so I can get those traction boards in where they need to be and or to deal with fires, you know, putting out a campfire or what have you. So good little shovel, small enough to pack and very cheap. The next thing is this Stanley 15 inch handsaw. And this thing is made in Denmark, which is interesting, but it's just a nice little saw, again, for tree branches or firewood or whatever you think you might need this for. It's not too big. It's definitely gonna get the job done and it was very cheap. And I wanna say this was about maybe $12 or something like that. So definitely worth its price, I would say. Seems like it's built like a tank and it's gonna be very useful, I'm sure. Another thing is the size. It's just really small and able to be packed in a small kit. Okay, so if you have a camp stove, if you have some source of flame, you're going to want to get a fire extinguisher. I would say bring two. You never know what you might need it for. You may even need it for your vehicle, so definitely over-prepare in terms of fire. I was able to find this one, which is a kitchen fire extinguisher. It's a single use. You can't refill this thing. But this thing was only like $12, so very, very worth its price. Or you could step it up to something like this. This is a little bit bigger. You only need them when you need them, but when you need them, this thing is going to come in very handy. Okay, so so another thing that I thought to put together is this tool bag. And this, I'm going to just pull out a couple of items because everybody's tool bag is gonna be unique to them and what they think they need. I've just put together a few hand tools, something simple, and this is still in the progress of being built out. So of course I have a set of gloves, various types of tape, you never know. I have a voltmeter, something cheap, very simple. A couple of sets of eye protection. And if you take a look inside, you can see I have some very basic hand tools, different types of pliers, here, various screwdrivers. I have my flathead and my Phillips Craftsman screwdrivers here. A couple of throwaway ones just in case. You never know what you might need something like this for that you know you can basically destroy. I've got a long 3 8 ratchet here with the size for my tensioner pulley to be able to change the belt as well as a socket for some spark plugs or something like that. And speaking of belts, I am packing an extra serpentine belt. You just never know when you might lose yours on the trail or something like that. Something else that could come in very handy is a set of wheel chocks. I bought this at Harbor Freight for probably like five bucks. You can bring one or two, just make sure you have one at least, something to chalk off your wheels. Of course, you could use rocks, but this will always work just a little bit better. You never know if you get stuck on a hill, your truck breaks down or what have you, you want to be able to chalk off your wheels so your vehicle just has less of a chance to roll down that hill. Very simple and cheap insurance. I also wanted some sort of external battery system, something that would be able to jump my truck's battery in the event of a failure. 
And this is what I came up with quite a while ago, and I've used it a few times, and it's worked fantastically. This little thing seems small, and of course, I'm going to want to upgrade this in the near future, but this is what I have for now. You see it's got a battery level indicator there, and what this is, is it basically an external battery, but it also, through this port here, and these jumper cables can jump my truck. Like I said, I've used this multiple times already, and it has worked, believe it or not. So while not the perfect solution, not the best option, at least it's something. The next few items here are things that I think are very handy. Of course, you have things like different sources of light. This is a headlamp. You're definitely gonna wanna make sure your batteries are charged and you bring extra batteries for your flashlights and whatnot. I've got a multi-tool. This one's by Gerber, but of course, Leatherman is great too. This is a set of pliers as well as a knife and all that stuff, so definitely could be very useful at times. Of course, everyone could use a good knife. This one is a great one. It is the Buck uh, 112 Slim Pro. This has the S35VN steel blade. Of course, that handle is pretty slick as well as that deep pocket clip. And the last couple of things here are these Saber Red Pepper Spray. I don't need to tell you, but these things could come in very handy at certain times. Let's just say you have an intruder into your campsite overnight, you can grab one of these and feel pretty confident that you're gonna be able to protect yourself from a small distance. These are very cheap, I wanna say like five bucks each, pick some of these up just to have them. So what you just saw was the very beginnings of my build out for my overlanding kit. Of course, there are a plethora of other things that I still need to get, things that are very useful when you go overlanding. And with those things, I think I'll only kind of learn that stuff the more I go and the deeper I get into all of this overlanding world. But what I would like is if you guys are experienced overlanders and you have tips for me, write them down in the comments section below. Maybe list off your favorite items that you have purchased that you think are indispensable when overlanding. I think that would help not only me, but all of us that are interested in this overlanding world. Most of the things that I just showed you are completely unused. They're brand new items that I have not had a chance to use, nor have I ever needed anything like this stuff. I did do some research online and just using my basic common sense on what I would need, what's a great option. This stuff is really, like I said, it's meant for beginners. It's meant for me, someone who's trying to get into this while not breaking the bank. I'm very excited about that sleeping bag. I think it's gonna be extremely warm no matter what conditions I find myself in. It's also gonna be comfortable because it's nice and thick and has lots of padding. That camp stove, only about 40 something dollars there and that is a classic. Lots of people have used those for many years. So I think it's gonna treat me pretty good. Those traction boards, I was so stoked when I found that company online. $135 gets you two boards and the bag that it comes in. That I think is a steal. You better grab some of those before that price goes up because I know it will. Of course, we have the various other things like that hatchet that's made in the USA by S-Wing, that little handsaw, that small shovel, and all of the tools and everything that you could need on the trail. I know there's not enough there right now. I know there's not. But all of this stuff fits neatly inside just one of those black and yellow plastic moving containers. And so that's what I'm trying to do is just basically build out one of those moving containers so I can just keep that thing packed, grab that when I need it, throw it in the back of my Suburban and hit the road. Well, I hope this video was at the very least entertaining for you. If it was, please hit that thumbs up and also subscribe if you're not already. Don't forget to comment below with some constructive criticism. It helps us all out. I do read a lot of your comments and thank you for that. I am Jimmy for One Road and I will see you in the next one. This is a major con to the sleeping bag, which is rolling the sucker back up. Like those two old friends, Will and Way. Where there's a will, there's a way.